So um, I, I'm with the LMS group, um, but specifically I'm the Medellica product manager. So um, I'm not an FMI expert, but I'm going to play one on TV today. Um, so without further ado, I'd like to at least introduce you a little bit about uh, what AIMSM is. Some of you may have used it before, some may not. So give you at least a, a little bit of a background as to what the tool is, what it offers, and then God help me, I'm doing a live demo. Uh, so AIMSM is a acronym of sorts, some sort of long-winded explanation, advanced modeling environment for performing simulations of engineering systems. Uh, but what it basically means is it's a platform. It's a platform for conducting simulations in transient time, doing frequency domain analysis, doing steady state and transient things, looking at um, all kinds of XIL and real-time applications, integrating with CAE tools. There's a whole host of things that you can do with the tool, and we're going to just touch on a few of those today. Uh, the architecture of the tool is, is uh, one in which you're creating models. Primarily, the tool began uh, with this large library of C-based models. Uh, but the architecture is there to allow you to do more than uh, the, the C-based libraries, but also to extend out into the Medellic platform and to use some other software interfaces that we'll be talking about here. So some of the platform features are things, you know, you, you never just want to run that one simulation. You want to see lots of different design explorations. You want to do different uh, things with real time and, and scripting, all those sorts of, of platform features that, that you're looking for beyond that, that initial simulation. The ones we're going to focus on here are the software interfaces and, and a little bit about the Medellica platform. So the libraries I mentioned, um, there's more than a few. All the things you see down here are part of the, on the left, the C-based libraries that are part of the tool. So we have everything in the auto, the auto sector, the aerospace um, uh, domains are coming in. We have electrical and chemical, thermal, hydraulics. Uh, I think hydraulics are kind of what we're known most for. These, these libraries are, are validated and, and used in industrial applications quite heavily. So we have a, a strong expertise in building up libraries of C-based models. Um, but we also have a Medellica platform. And the Medellica platform allows you to also build models um, using the Medellica open standard. Um, so we have people that can drag and drop library components from our, our C-based libraries. Uh, they can create custom C-based models. They can drag and drop Medellica components. They can create custom Medellica models, or they can link those together. We have the ability to cross-couple those um, Medellica and C-based models as well. When we talk about interfaces, um, there's lots of different kinds of interfaces we mean. Uh, AIMSIM comes uh, with several predefined custom interfaces. You know, I think this is what we heard from the other vendors that you know, in the early days, back, way back when, uh, you were just kind of doing one-on-one -on -one interfaces with different tools. And so we have a variety of tools for simulations or for pedo software uh, that we connect directly to some other um, software environments. Uh, we also have these generic COSIM interfaces that we began a while back, so allowing you to couple in things with uh, CFD, NVH, those kinds of, of uh, applications. And more specifically to this, we'd like to talk more about the FMI support. Uh, so what is the FMI support currently? Um, we began in Rev 10 with an FMI from Model Exchange doing exports um, in the uh, Medellic platform and the AIMSIM submodels. So in Rev 11 is when we introduced the import ability for FMI from Model Exchange. In Rev 12 is when we added the COSIM exports. And uh, Rev 13 is due out at the end of this month. Uh, and that is where we'll, we'll add the final piece there to have the import for FMI COSIM. So at that point, we have essentially the full suite uh, of FMI support. Now, this is all done using the FMI 1.0 specification. Uh, we've just begun the Rev uh, 14 cycle, and so that, that is where we'll start work on the FMI 2.0 specs now that the release candidate is out. Um, so we're actually, um, I'm, I'm interested in showing you guys how this stuff works, and, and if this all works the way it's supposed to, you're going to actually see all four of these things. So let's, let's see how we do. So for the demo here, um, we're going to assume we have, this is an AIMSIM model of, of a steam power plant. And, you know, we're going to keep it fairly simple, but you, you have essentially a closed loop system here with your water boiler going into a steam turbine, which is uh, powering the flywheel um, with some given load on that flywheel. And we're going to partition the system and just going to pretend that there's different tools doing these different parts of the model. And so we'll say that um, we have maybe some kind of a system uh, group working on the steam plant, and they'll have a system group working in the mechanical load, and another group working on the speed controller and the heat generation. 
And you'll notice that these interfaces, these are the signals that need to be passed back and forth through the FMI or through the FMUs, okay? So we can consider something like the mechanical load system has to send the speed signal to the speed controller. The speed controller is sending the heat flow to the, speed, uh, to the steam plant. In the steam plant, and the mechanical load are communicating back and forth with their speed and torque. So for this demo, we'll have AIMSIM essentially be the master environment for the mechanical load portion of this. And we will take the speed controller, we'll build a Medelica model for that, where the Medelica model will have an FMU from model exchange. And that model exchange will be exported into the AIMSIM environment. So we'll do the FMI export from here and an FMI import from here. But this is using uh, model exchange and it's one of the uh, Medelica based FMUs. Uh, then we'll use a C-based FMU to do the other side. We'll have a, an AIMSIM model using our C libraries, and we're going to export an FMU for COSIM this time. And that COSIM model is going to be or is going to be imported on the AIMSIM side here. So now you've effectively got the import and the export COSIM model exchange all four working together. And um, God willing, it all works, and this is what it's going to look like. So this is where things always get fun. So let's start here with the steam plant. So as we said, we have this kind of load controller where we've got the two FMUs coming together, but you need to generate those FMUs. So that's what we're going we're gonna to do first. So the steam plant um, here, you'll see that it has this block on the right-hand side that says FMI for COSIM 1.0. This is one of our um, interface. Let's see if I can see my mouse. Okay. So when you drop in an interface into an AIMSIM sketch, it gives you the ability to add inputs, uh, add outputs. You can label them here. This is just the tech that's appearing. But we mentioned in the beginning that there's different kinds of interfaces that we offer. And you see some of the list of them here. So this is where some of the custom interfaces for like the LabVIEW tools, the Atoms tools, um, you see some of the specific uh, predefined interfaces here. But we're interested in the FMI co-simulation, so that's the one that's selected for this particular demo. So um, I'll just exit out of that. And once that block is there, what it's saying is that this model needs to send out a torque signal and needs to receive back a heat and a speed signal. And all I have to do um, is compile this model, and it's in the compilation process that it actually goes off and generates, and I don't know how big this is on your screen. It's a pretty big screen. Um, but you can see, I don't know if that, oh, my mouse is rather sensitive. I don't know if you can see that line, but it's basically indicating to the user that the FMU has been generated. So that it's, it's simply compiling the model that that has created for you. And if you look in your working environment here, I'm going to scroll down a bit. All that it's done is just generate this FMU for us here. Okay, so you can see it was just generated a minute ago. Okay, so now point we, we've exported an FMU for COSIM. Now I'm going to switch over to the Medelica platform, and here I've just got a simple PID control that's going to essentially um, dictate a, a percent of max load, and that's going to become a heat signal or heat flow signal over to um, AIMSIM. And you'll notice we have some non-standard Medelica uh, blocks here. These are our interface blocks that allow us to pass signals between our Medelica world and our C-base world. So all I'm going to do here is convert to native AIMSIM submodel. This is effectively our compile option. And this is where we have a wizard to walk you through the interface things. I'm not going to um, belabor all the details of this, but this is basically where you would al allow the user to specify um, the causality of your models, how you're um, putting these into the libraries, which library in AIMSIM do you want to put this into, um, and all these details have been taken care of for us already. And we have some specific compiler options that basically say, when you compile this model, let's make an FMI out of it. Okay? So again, it's in this process here that I've now prepared this model to be exported for an FMI. And uh, for the time being, I'm just going to uh, use our console here. I just issue a command. So again, if you want to do some scripting, you can, you can create some scripting uh, here to generate the, the FMUs. So it goes off, the, the submodels are basically what the, the Medelica platform compiles for us. And then this is the FMI export tool. We, we go through these uh, parts here, and then that is going to generate the FMU. So now we have created a subfolder 
here with a new FMU. You can see that was just created. So now we have our, out, our exported FMU from Model Exchange. So at this point now, we can go back into the AIMSIM world. We generated, if I can just close this screen. Sorry, it's actually hard to see my mouse here, or my keypad. Okay, so now I can go over to this environment. And now I, I have some FMU sitting out there, and I need to import them. Okay, so again, I'm just going to use a, a simple command line interface for the moment. Um, but here, this is the command basically saying there's something called steamplant.fmu. Go ahead and import that. So it's now going and generating the submodels that AIMSIM needs to use to, to simulate. <coughs> And I'll go off and grab the FMU for the speed controller portion that we that we created. And now those exist as options for me to choose from with this FMI here. So you can see it's been named MEM. So in other words, model exchange import and speed controller is the name of that particular model. And then down here you have COSIM import uh, for the steam plant. So now we have successfully imported both of those FMUs into this model here. And at this point, we can go off and simulate that as we would any other AIMSIM model. So the, the platform features here now is where you can see, you know, you can, you can use these FMUs as you would any other AIMSIM block. You can um, go off and create some plots. So you can see the mechanical power of your system over time. Oops. Um, you can look at different signals. You can essentially store these plots in the model itself so you, you've got these post-processing capabilities that are, are ready for you to use. Uh, but you also have things like dashboards. There's, there's lots of different widgets and things we can, we can show you, but um, the dashboard is a way for you to kind of hook up some gauges and things like that to, um, actually let me start this guy back at the beginning again. Uh, so you have these these different gadgets and widgets where this is, you know, for those of you that have, have um, used other of these tools, you're, you're basically creating a graphical object and then linking a, a variable from your simulation into the graphical object. So now you're, you're able to see those results and um, you can control essentially the, the speed at which it's, it's displaying. I think around 300 seconds is where you see a change in the load. Um, so you'll notice, um, let me just finish this running to 300. Okay, so you see the load shift over there. And what's happening is the, I'm going to stop this guy, probably not too much more interesting here. This is just the load signal that's coming from the model. It just starts low, goes high, goes back low again. And so all that's able to, to view through the dashboard. Um, one of the other um, things we talked about earlier is this ability um, to use FMI not only to share models, but to protect models. Okay, so when you look at the FMUs that we see sitting here, the steam plant has a lot of variables. And there's a lot of things in there that you may want to see, which also means there's a lot of things in there that you may want to hide. And it's a relatively simple matter here. We just launch our interface, and this gives you the option to configure that FMU. And here you see by default it's exporting all the parameters and all the variables that exist in that model. You don't have to say pretty please may I have that value. By default you get all your stuff. Uh, but you also have the option to export only the, the interface variables, essentially the inputs and the outputs. And um, this uses the AIMSIM watch parameters and watch variables. So in this example here, I'll go ahead and, and select OK. It just went ahead and recompiled my FMU for me. So that, that kind of a change you can do automatically. What you see in this tab here is watch variables. What that means is I can go to any of these components here and I can drag and drop their parameters and their variables into um, this watch variable list. And then those become the only, uh, so I'm going to re-import that model. Um, yeah, I'm going to re-import it back on the other side now since I've already exported it. Those become the only um, variables that we see. So when I go here and I'm going to update my model, it's going to see Oh, it looks like this model right here changed. You know, do you want to go ahead and update that or not? So I'll click update. And then when I compile my model this time, you'll see that the only variables that are listed this time are the three interface variables, the, the two inputs and the one output, 
and the six variables that were on the watch parameter list. Okay, so this is a way for you to expose what you want to expose to the analyst and to hide the rest on the inside. Okay, and um, so this is one of the things you can, you can take advantage of. Another feature here is um, you can see the difference between these mo two models is here we had a signal-based load. And here, this is a special block that allows you to um, interact with the simulation live. So what I'll do here is I hooked up that one signal to this new dial here called load. And I can drag this up and down. You can see the simulation responding to me. You can see the temperature is changing, the rotor speed is shifting. Of course, the, the simulation is, is kind of slow. On, oh, I actually just finished, that's why. I only have it going for a thousand seconds. Um, and you also have the option to kind of shift some of these things to either run in real time or slower than real time. But all of these are basically, you're seeing the response that I put through that widget is being observed directly during the simulation. And I can watch those gauges move. I can, I can post-process things later and do all the kinds of um, analysis and platform features that you have normally. Um, but that, that's at least a few of the features that we offer, uh, ways to, to take advantage of the powers of the FMU to do a variety of things. Thank you very much.